Welcome back to Jim Johnston Reviews the World, where it's my channel, so I'll do whatever the heck I want. Today on Cook It and Eat It, we have for you my wonderful, amazing turkey burger and meatball recipe. This is a recipe fit for a king or a queen, or a tailgater, you know. Well, it's not award-winning, but it should be recipe for turkey burgers. And I actually uh, got this recipe from a really good friend of mine. Got the basic recipe. And like I do with everything, I took it, I took away a couple things, I added a few different things, made it my own, and I'm going to share it with you today. What you need, get out the handy dandy mallet, the pat and the pen, no wait, different show. What you need, pound of ground turkey, cup of chopped onions and peppers, oregano, black pepper, Worcestershire sauce, liquid smoke, seasoned salt, steak sauce, chopped chives, garlic powder, couple plastic lids, we'll get into those later, and then you need two tablespoons of something that can soak up excess moisture. A lot of people use breadcrumbs, sometimes people use uh, ground up oats. In this case today, I've got two tablespoons of ground up five minute instant brown rice, and I just buzz that up in my coffee mill. So let's get this turkey out into a bowl, and I'll be back to show you how to put it all together. All right, we got that turkey out in a bowl. And let's uh, get things going, get her mixed up. Going first with our onion pepper blend. Now this was frozen onion pepper blend. And so if you are gonna use frozen, you're gonna wanna thaw it out first and uh, put it in some paper towels and drain as much excess liquid out of it as you, as you can. If you're using fresh, uh, you might actually wanna do the same thing after you chop it, but you want that pretty fine chopped little pieces so it can incorporate in. And go ahead and we'll put in our a rice, a half tablespoon each, oregano, chives, garlic, about a one, one and a half teaspoon equivalent of seasoned salt, and a big bunch of black pepper. And if you're uh, measuring the pepper or you're using pre-ground, uh, same thing, you want a half tablespoon. So all the spices are pretty much a half tablespoon. Now we want a healthy tablespoon, so a little over a tablespoon of steak sauce. That would be 10 dashes of Worcestershire sauce and a dozen drops of liquid smoke. That's it. That's all it takes. Mix it up real good. We'll be right back when she's mixed. All right, I got all those ingredients incorporated and I forgot to mention, you're going to also be a good time now to add a crushed red pepper to taste. So I shook some of that in there just to give it a little bit of heat. Smells beautiful, smoky, wonderful right now. So what you want to do at this point is take this mess, go ahead and clamp a lid on, and park this in the fridge for at least two hours, possibly even overnight. That's going to give all those flavors a chance to start melding together. It's also going to firm the meat up because that warmed up quite a bit for me stirring it up. And also let that brown rice or panko or whatever you're using that can absorb moisture that's going to start working to absorb some excess moisture. Again, this is kind of a, a master recipe, if you will, where you can use this for turkey burgers, you can use this for meatballs, or you can use this for meatloaf. And all you have to do is change up the seasonings a little bit, depending upon what you want. But we'll talk about that more later while we're frying the burger. So we'll be back in about two hours, show you how to make some patties. Okay, while that meat is in its final stages of chilling out, I want to show you how to prepare a makeshift burger press. Now, if you have a fancy burger press at home or you just like doing hand form patties, that's great. Do your thing. But if you don't, get you a couple lids. This one's from French Onion Dip, so that's about the size. That's from a Pyrex. Some plastic wrap. Pull out a nice big thing of plastic wrap. Put about two, fold it over so you have two layers. And put two layers of plastic wrap on each of these. And I'll do that and show you how it looks. So here we have our makeshift burger press. This will be the bottom because it's a little bit bigger than the top. And you see I just folded over the saran and then we get ready to go. And this is one of the things, folks, you don't need to be intimidated by food. You don't need to be afraid. And you don't need a lot of, if any, fancy kitchen gadgets that these millionaire TV chefs on TV are always showing you on their fancy cooking shows. So enough about preaching. We'll be back to make some patties in just a few minutes. All right, our meat has been resting for several hours in the refrigerator. Let's open it up and take a look. Oh, look at that. Well, that's 
all ready to go. Now I took it out about five minutes ago, even though you want to refrigerate it to let all everything stiffen up and all the flavors meld. When you do get ready to cook, you want to take it out, give it about five minutes to warm up, and then we're just going to give her a quick toss. All right, who's ready to cook? I got my electric skillet just off camera, set to 375. Spoiler, it actually has my first hamburger in it. I wanted to make a practice round before I brought it onto the camera. I'm going to get a meatball going. So I try to handle this the least amount possible at this point. But you do want a decent sized meatball, bigger than a golf ball, smaller than a baseball. And I try to just handle it with one hand at this point so I can keep my other hand clean. That's maybe the size of a squash ball or Harry Potter fans. It might be about the size of a Quidditch. I don't actually know. I'm not a fan. So then you take your meatball. You start to spread it out by hand. And again, this was just two lids with saran wraps making a makeshift patty form. Always do the best with what you have. Not only good words for cooking, but good words for life. Take your lid. And you press it down. I like to press and spin. And you get a good full revelation when I press down again. I don't know if I mentioned, but I do like, I prefer thinner, more thinner patties. I don't usually double stack or stuff. I, I, I'm, not in the, I'm not a thick burger guy. If I can finish this up, made a little mistake there. Move my spoon. Now once you do a few of these, get a little bit of practice, you'll actually be able to pop these out without having to play around with them. I haven't made this uh, these burgers since last fall, as far as I remember. So I'm a little out of practice on my patty forming. But with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to stick it right in, pop them right back out. So here's our finished patty. We're just going to take it. I don't know if you can completely see it, but we're going to take it and just let it slide off that wax paper. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn that other burger that was already in here. Oh, yeah, nice char. Again, I like a nice char on my burgers. All right, I'm going to let these burgers cook. I'm going to fire out uh, two more of these burgers into here, and then we'll come back and see what we got left to make some meatballs uh, so I can have some nice meaty balls for uh, some spaghetti in a couple days. All right, so I got into it. I decided to make five burgers instead of four. I'm going to have plenty of leftovers. I'm going to have uh, burgers for lunch the next few days. I got enough meat left in here to make some meatballs. What I was saying about a little bit of practice, this is my fifth burger today. And that one went down, pressed out, and came out perfectly first time. I'm going to add this to the pan. And I like to only flip my burgers once. That's just kind of my style. Everyone has their own way. And pretty soon we're going to dress these. I like to have lettuce or... Actually, I really like to have spinach on my burgers. I know, I know, some of you at home are probably freaking out like, Ah, spinach on a burger! The earthy tones of spinach actually play really well with meat. And that spinach is so good for you, full of vitamins and minerals. Give it a shot once, you might be surprised. But what I did today is I made some onions and peppers. I don't have ketchup. I don't tend to have ketchup. I'm not a fan unless I can find sriracha, which is really hard to find where I live. So we'll put a little barbecue sauce, we got a bun, and some cheese. I'm going to make these meatballs up, toss those in, and then we'll be back in to uh, cheese our burgers. All right, we're back. I've put in the meatballs. Actually, I got one in my hand still. I wanted to show you. I just kind of roll it, use my thumb. Okay, and I like to, when I'm handling raw meat like this, I like to just try to use just one hand. And then we got six meatballs for me. That's a dinner. So, depending upon how I do the burgers, if I eat a burger for lunch, I'll only eat one. If I eat a burger for dinner, I'll eat two. So, I've got, I've got at least four meals here, maybe five. So that's a good thing. I like having meals. I like doing a little bit of meal prep. Look at that. All right, I'm going to wash my hands real quick, and then we're going to cheese All right, let's get some cheese, if you please. Make sure nothing's stuck here. All right, let's put some cheese. I got my last slice of pepper jack. This one looks like it wants some pepper jack. Put that on. Put a piece of cheddar on one. Cheddar. You know what they say, cheddar makes everything better. Also, so does bacon, and usually peanut butter. So you let that cheese start to melt, we'll be right back. All right, my bad. I showed you how I dressed my buns, but I didn't actually have my buns in frame. So what I have is a couple sandwich skinnies. Real quick, barbecue sauce, onions and peppers. Onions and peppers, I did uh, just cook them in my skillet before I started my burgers, and just light sprinkling of 
seasoned salt and garlic powder. And I mentioned that I don't really eat white bread, sandwich rolls, or hot dog buns anymore. I tend to save the carbs, go a little more nutritious, a little bit better for me. And like I mentioned earlier, I really wish I had some spinach to throw on here. The last time I went to the store, the spinach all looked kind of kind of janky, so I didn't want to waste my money on it. All right, let's see what we got here. Take that lid off. And oh, yes. Yes, my friends. Here is Pepper Jack Love. Look at that. Cheddar is better. So there we have it. The world's best turkey burgers. I'm telling you folks, even without the onions and peppers and barbecue sauce and even without cheese, you just took one of these burgers and bit into it. So good. You won't be able to tell it's not beef. Third of the calories of beef, much less saturated fat. Better for your body, folks. I'm trying to not only teach you how to cook delicious things, I'm trying to give you some tips on how to fuel your bodies uh, so you can have a better quality of life, better health overall, and less susceptible to various illnesses. You don't have to eat perfect all the time. You really don't. All right, enough of me blabbing. Let's lid these burgers and give one a taste. Which one do you think, folks at home? Pepper Jack or cheddar? Which should I taste first? Any, mini, mighty, no. Bubble gum, bubble gum, in a, no. Oh well. Let's just try, just spin them around so I don't know which is which, right? I'm looking at the camera. I'm looking off in the distance, don't know which is which. So now we got a surprise. Let's go with this one. I think this is going to be cheddar. What is it? Oh yeah, that's cheddar. I guess my uh, poor game of three card Monty didn't really work very well here. Look at that. Look at that. Urgh. Delicious burger. Let's give her a taste. Mm-mm-mm. <clears throat> Mmm, delicious. Like I said, folks, can't believe it's not beef. This is a wonderful burger. These would go great on your grill. You can load them up, put them in a smoker, frying pan. If you're real desperate, I guess you can heat your car up and put on a piece of aluminum foil on your engine block and cook them that way. Mm -mm. Yeah, Daddy, that's a delicious burger. It's good for you inside and out. So my meatballs are done. I got burgers left. One pound of burger meat. I'm going to feed this boy for the next three days. All right, there you have it. A plate of burgers and meatballs made out of turkey, but fit for any carnivore in your life. Thanks for joining us here on Cook It and Eat It. We'll see you again next time when we make more awesome food that's either healthy or not. <laughs> Remember, folks, if you like my stuff, please comment. I'd love for you to comment on this video. Subscribe and share with your friends. And also check out down in the video description below. We now have a limited content Facebook uh, page and Facebook group started for Jim Johnston Reviews the World. See you next time.